you know that gut check moment? Mm -hmm. That little voice asking, what happens if this thing actually dies? Oh, yeah. We're talking about the absolute heart of your home lab, right? Your Proxmox server. Mm -hmm. The foundation. Exactly. It's the foundation for every single virtual machine, every container you spun up at like 2 a.m. saying you're learning. We've all been there. But uh, when it comes to backing up the host itself. Yeah. I mean, not your precious VMs, we know about PVS for that, but the actual Proxmox config. Yeah, the host OS and PVE setup. The answers just aren't that clear, are they? You spend five minutes in forums and it's just, it's a mess of conflicting advice. It really is. And you get a surprising number of people saying, ah, don't bother, just reinstall it. Mm -hmm. Which, I don't know, that feels wrong somehow, right? Surely <laughs> there's a better way. Well, what's fascinating here, I think, is that this isn't just, you know, a technical puzzle. It very quickly becomes about peace of mind. Peace of mind, yeah. yeah. So today, we're going to take a deep dive into what the community is saying, why the right answer isn't simple at all, and uh, what your best bet might actually be. And ultimately, this whole deep dive, it isn't just about hard drives or some clever scripts. Like, our source material just perfectly sums it up. Backup is about sleep, not storage. That's the core of it, isn't it? That's our mission today, really, to help you find the solution that lets you finally exhale, you know? We'll unpack what a host backup even means in this context, explore the, frankly, surprising variety of approaches, and hopefully land on some practical wisdom, mm -hmm. stuff that helps you sleep soundly. Sounds good. Sleep is definitely the goal here. Okay, so let's unpack this a bit then, mm -hmm. before we really get into the scripts and servers and all that. Yeah. We need to clarify what we actually mean by host backup. Right. Crucial distinction. We're absolutely not talking about your VMs or your LXCs. That's like a whole different conversation. Yeah. Solved problem mostly thanks to Proxmox backup server, PBS. Yeah. That's exactly. PBS is, I mean, it's built for that, right? It excels at handling the heavy lifting for your virtual machines, your containers, mm -hmm. making sure their data is safe. Mm -hmm. But the host itself, the underlying OS, the Proxmox install, that's where the mystery seems to lie for a lot of folks. Precisely. What most people really want to back up when they talk about the host isn't the data inside those VMs. It's more like the the scaffolding, you know, the framework holding their whole virtual environment together. Scaffolding. I like that analogy. Like the blueprints. Exactly. Think about the specific configuration elements. You've got your network configuration. It's huge. All your bridges, your VLANs, any bond interfaces, mm. the stuff connecting your VMs to the world. Right. VM Brazier and all his friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then your VM and LXC configs themselves, the actual definitions. They live under a central Vikiva server and a central LXC. Lose those, and Proxmox doesn't know your VNs exist. Ouch. And if you're running a cluster, well, then you've got your critical cluster info, too. Like, yeah. course and configs, that's the cluster communication, the heartbeat, and node data. Then there's storage configs. How your ZFS pools or LVM groups or whatever are mapped, absolutely crucial. User accounts, roles recreating permissions is just tedious. Yeah, yeah. Hate doing permissions. And finally, your backup configs themselves. Your PBS targets, retention policies, schedules. You need to back up the backup plan. Right. It's meta. It is. And the consequences stark. Lose this stuff and you're staring at a totally blank install screen wondering uh, which bridge was Vimber Zero and kicking yourself because you didn't write it down. <laughs> Been there. It's not fun. Mm. So how are people tackling this? What's the first approach? Okay. So the first big group we see is what you could call the script and sync crowd. Right. The DIY folks. Pretty much. These are the people who swear by custom scripts. I mean, at its simplest, it's often just a cron job, right? something that tars up, et cetera, V. That core directory you mentioned. Exactly. It bundles that up and then ships it off-site somewhere. Could be a NAS, could be a Git repo, maybe even a cloud bucket like S3. Okay. And are, are there popular scripts for this? Yeah, there's one that comes up quite a bit. Uh, Ties 24 Devs Proxmox Backup Script. It's open source, pretty lightweight. And it just packages up those key directories. Basically, yeah. Makes them portable. Now, the advantages of this whole scripting approach are pretty clear. First, it's transparent. You know exactly what's being backed up because, well, you can read the script or you wrote it. You see the code. Right. Second, it's very versionable, especially if you push it to Git. You can track every single change, roll back if you mess something up. That's a great safety net. Oh, that's clever. Using Git for config history. Absolutely. And importantly, these scripts are often cluster aware. They can handle running across multiple nodes without tripping over themselves. Okay, so transparency, versioning, cluster friendly. Sounds pretty good. What's the catch? 
Well, the main drawback is it's definitely not a turnkey solution, right? You're building a backup workflow yourself. It's not like installing an app and clicking backup. It requires some effort up front. And the restore process. It's often manual. You're going to be copying config files back, maybe restarting services, piecing things back together. It takes some care. Right, it's not just click restore. Exactly. So while it gives you control, the responsibility is totally on you to manage it, test it, make sure it works, which, you know, impacts that sleep at night factor if you're not diligent. I see the trade-off, and I remember seeing a pro tip about this. People often pair these scripts with something like Circlone. Yeah, absolutely. Circlone is fantastic for syncing those backup archives to like basically any cloud storage, Google Drive, Dropbox, Backblaze, B2, you name it. Or even GitHub private repos, like you said, for that versioning. Yep, people really do that. It gives you that offsite copy and the history, which again, can definitely help you sleep better knowing your config is safe and you can track changes. Okay, that makes a lot of sense for the hands-on crowd. Mm. Now let's pivot completely. What about this other philosophy, the PBS purists? The ones who lean towards just reinstall. Right. This is almost the opposite approach. It sounds simpler, maybe? What's the thinking here? Well, the logic is pretty compelling for a lot of users. Like we said, Proxmox Backup Server, PBS, is fantastic for VM and right. container backups. It's robust. It's efficient. It does its job very well. And for many people, just using PBS for the guests. Yeah. That's actually enough. Why? Because they argue in a disaster, what really matters, it's the guests, your VMs, your containers. That's where the critical data and services live. The crown jewels, as they say. Exactly. The host itself, the Proxmox install, they see it as, well, disposable, easily replaceable. Disposable. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Proxmox is open source. What? The ISO is readily available. Installation is pretty quick, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And the default settings are generally quite reasonable. True. The defaults work out of the box for most things. There was this great user quote we saw. I keep my host very vanilla and document any tweaks. Reinstalled Proxmox once and had everything restored in under an hour. Under an hour. Okay. That is compelling if you can pull it off. Right. If your setup isn't super complex, if you haven't done crazy network configs or ZFS tuning, mm -hmm. maybe a fresh install is the fastest way back online. It definitely cuts down on the immediate recovery anxiety. So the advantages are less complexity. For sure. No extra scripts or tools to manage for the host itself if you're already using PBS. You get those fast VM restores via PBS, which is usually the top priority. Getting the services back online. Exactly. And fewer failure points overall. No custom backup scripts to maintain or troubleshoot. I have to admit that just reinstall logic mm. sounds, I don't know, kind of liberating. Mm -hmm. But my gut tells me there's always a catch with simplicity like that. What's the risk? What's the potential pitfall here? You're absolutely right to push on that. The biggest drawback, the major assumption, is that you have excellent documentation. Ah, documentation. The yes. home lover's constant struggle. Isn't it just? If you forget one tiny network tweak, <laughs> one firewall rule you added six months ago, one little host customization, you're in for a world of pain trying to figure out why things aren't working after the reinstall. Right. That doesn't sound like restful sleep at all. Not at all. And this approach is definitely not for what you might call snowflake setups. Snowflake setups. Yeah. You know, hosts where the configuration is highly unique, a real work of art, maybe lots of customizations, special scripts running directly on the host, weird hardware integration. If your host isn't vanilla. Exactly. If it's a snowflake, don't skip host backups. The time you think you're saving by not backing it up, you'll lose that tenfold trying to recreate your undocumented masterpiece from memory. Much less sleep involved there. Good point. Okay, so we've got scripting, we've got reinstalling, but what if you just want absolute, total certainty, no questions asked? That brings us to the, uh, the heavy hitter option. Yep, what some call the nuclear option. We're talking full disk imaging, the clonezilla and chill crowd. Clonezilla. Old school, but effective. So this is just... Snapshot the whole boot drive. Pretty much. Take an image of the entire OS disk where Proxmox is installed, warts and all, and stash that image file somewhere safe. Brute force, but I can see the appeal. Oh yeah. When disaster hits, you just blast that image back onto a new drive or the same hardware and poof, you're exactly where you were when you took the image. The advantages seem obvious then. Mm. It's totally comprehensive. Absolutely. You're not missing a single byte. Not one config file, not one setting. And zero reconfiguration needed for the restore. None. It's an exact state restore. Yeah. Which, for some people, provides unparalleled peace of mind. You know, that ultimate sleep assurance. 
But it can't be all sunshine and rainbows. What are the downsides to nuking the whole drive image like that? They're pretty significant too. First off, storage. Full disk imagers are not small. They can eat up your backup space really quickly, especially if you keep multiple versions. Yeah, OS drives can get chunky. And they are slow, slow to create, slow to restore. This isn't something you're running every night, probably not even every week in most cases. It's more of a like strategic, periodic backup. Like a major baseline backup. Exactly. Honestly, it feels like overkill for most typical home labs where the host config isn't that wild. Mm. But... But if uptime is absolutely critical, maybe you're running something business related or just something your family really relies on. Right. The spouse acceptance factor is high. Precisely. Or if your host is running custom kernel tweaks, weird drivers, complex stuff, then yeah, you might genuinely sleep better knowing you have that full disk image ready to go. It's the ultimate break glass in case of emergency plan. Totally. Maximum peace of mind, even if it's less convenient day to day. Okay. That covers the main approaches for a single host. Scripts, reinstall, full disk image. Yeah. But what if you're running a cluster? Multiple Proxmox nodes working together. Does that change the whole host backup game? Does it make it simpler? More complex? Oh, it absolutely changes the equation. And usually it simplifies things dramatically when it comes to the host config itself. Really? How so? Well, think about how a Proxmox cluster works. All those critical configurations we talked about, network, storage, VM definitions, they're inherently synchronized across all the nodes in the cluster. Ah, uh, right. Through that accessory directory being clustered. Exactly. It uses a distributed file system and database, primarily Core Sync and PMXCS, to keep PVV consistent everywhere. So if you lose one node, say the hardware just dies, yeah. the configuration isn't actually lost. It still exists on all the other surviving nodes in the cluster. Okay, so the config is redundant by design. Precisely. So often the recovery process is get new hardware, do a fresh basic install of Proxmox, and then just join it to the existing cluster. Good join cluster. Pretty much. You provide the cluster details, and within minutes, that new node automatically pulls down all the necessary configuration from its peers. Network settings, storage definitions, VM locations, it all syncs up. Wow. So the host setup is basically self-healing in a way. For the configuration part, yeah. It significantly cuts down on the anxiety about backing up the individual host config in a cluster. That's a huge deal. There's another great quote from an admin on this. For a cluster of multi-nodes, you don't back up the node. You run an automated script to create a new node and restore VMs. No need to waste time troubleshooting the host. Just treat the node as cattle, not a pet. That's a classic analogy, yep. And it's a really compelling argument. It's why many larger setups, or anyone prioritizing high availability, often don't bother with specific host-level backups at all. The cluster is the resilience mechanism for the config. That makes total sense. The cluster provides its own kind of sleep insurance for the configuration. You got it. Okay, so after looking at all this, scripting, reinstalling, imaging, mm -hmm. clusters, it feels like the answer nobody really wants to hear is coming, doesn't it? Yeah, the classic, it depends. Exactly. The proper way to back up a Proxmox host really does depend entirely on how you use it, what your tolerance for risk is, what kind of setup you actually have. There just isn't one single magic billet. There really isn't. But we can sort of map the methods to use cases, right? Like if you're running a single node home lab, maybe just messing around, yeah. then scripts probably make a ton of sense. They're lightweight, give you control, restore isn't too bad for one machine, offers a good balance, helps you sleep knowing etc. to you safe. Okay. And clusters. Mm -hmm. Clusters, like we just discussed. You can often skip traditional host backups entirely. Leverage the cluster sync. Fresh installs are your friend. Much simpler recovery path there. And the big guns. Clonezilla. That's for your business critical node, maybe. Where even minutes of downtime hurt. Or if your host is that super customized snowflake, that full disk image gives you that absolute guaranteed restore state. Maximum peace of mind. Maximum storage cost. Right. But... What's the one thing that cuts across all of these? The thing everyone should do no matter which path they choose. Ah, the universal truth. The key to actual real sleep, regardless of your backup method. Document your setup. Seriously. Write it down. Absolutely. I cannot stress this enough. Use a wiki, use markdown files in your Git repo, use a physical notebook. I don't care. Just write down the stuff you know you'll forget six months from now. Like which network card goes to which bridge. Exactly. Which physical NIC is VM Brew Zero? What does your storage layout actually look like? What were those weird systole tweaks you made? Those custom hooks you swore you'd remember? You won't remember. 
You absolutely won't. Documentation is basically the backup plan for your own brain. It prevents those future 3 a.m. panic sessions. That's what really lets you sleep. That is so crucial. Okay, so for listeners maybe feeling a bit lost in all these options, analysis, paralysis setting in, we put together kind of a practical start simple build confidence guide, didn't we? We did. If you're just looking for concrete steps to get some peace of mind right now, here are four things we'd recommend. It's about building confidence and lowering that anxiety. Okay, step one. Step one, automate your config backups. Minimum viable peace of mind. Set up simple cron job or use one of those scripts we talked about. Get, et cetera, PV and et cetera, network interfaces backed up somewhere automatically. That's your baseline for better sleep. Just get those core configs safe. Got it. Step two. Step two, non-negotiable. Use Proxmox backup server for all your VM and LXC backups, period. No excuses. None. It's built for the job. It's excellent at it. Relying on PBS means you stop worrying about your actual data, which is huge. Yes, you. Yeah. Step three. Keep your install media handy, USB stick, whatever, and document any tweaks you make to the host. Seriously, even just a text file with notes saves hours later, saves stress. Document, document, document. And step four. Step four is for the truly paranoid. Or maybe just the pragmatic running production stuff. Snapshot the entire boot disk occasionally. Mm. Use Clonezilla. Use DD. Whatever disk imaging tool you like, it's that ultimate safety net, knowing you can go back to a full working state if everything hits the fan. That break glass option again. Exactly. Provides that deep down assurance. Okay, this has been illuminating. We started this deep dive with that really powerful idea, that quote, and it feels like the perfect place to end. Yeah. Whether it's that nightly versync of your configs or the occasional full disk image or just having a rock solid PBS set up for your VMs, it really boils down to one thing. Backup is about sleep, not storage. Exactly. It's not about the most technically elegant script or the fastest, fanciest backup storage target. It's really about waking up at 3 a.m. because the server died and not feeling that cold dread, that soul leaving your body moment. Yeah, knowing you have a plan. It's about choosing the solution, whatever it is for you, that lets you exhale knowing you have a path back, knowing your work wasn't for nothing. It's about building confidence in your ability to recover. That peace of mind, that's the real ROI on your backup strategy. Beautifully put. And I guess that raises a final question for you, the listener, mm. to think about. What else in your digital life, maybe even in your broader day-to-day, -day, is causing you that low-level anxiety? That maybe a simple backup, just a bit of planning, a solid strategy could transform into that feeling of peace, that ability to sleep soundly. Because like the source reminded us, the only thing genuinely worse than losing a Proxmox node is realizing you never backed it up in the first place. Yeah. And losing all that sleep because of it.